Greetings, Oldswind here, and welcome to Let's Play Lord of the Rings The Battle for Middle-Earth. One more featurette video. I think this would be the last featurette video. And we're gonna look at how we can help our frontline units during their battles against the forces of good. <laughs> Sounds wrong to say that, you know, forces of good. We are the forces of evil. Uh, we're helping Sauron here. And it's kind of strange to end off with the evil campaign, or rather the evil factions. But, well, it is what it is, huh? We're looking at some of these powers, you know? What does Sauron give us? So we accumulate power points and then we get to unlock the powers. What does Sauron have for us? For the evil faction, as opposed to the good faction, which is mostly summons like allies, you know, camaraderie, fighting together, unity and harmony. For the evil factions, it's all about destruction, damage, devastation. We start with War Chant, plus 150% damage and plus 50% armor to targeted units. Left click and then right click again on target. For War Chant, it has got a 2 minutes cooldown and requires 1 point to unlock. No power prerequisite. Click on it and then right click. You see these glowing brighter? So the more buffs they have, the brighter the glow. Being able to use it like every 2 minutes, wow, that is something quite significant. Every two minutes we get more than double the damage because it's a plus 150% and also we get an additional half more armor. So let's say it's 10, it becomes 15, okay? That is quite something every two minutes. Now the next power we have would be the vision of the Palantia to spy on the enemy forces. However, we do not have that power available here. It has been disabled in this territory. On the final mission of the evil campaign here, Minas Tirith, the map is revealed to us, like the good campaign, Black Gates, okay? Next, industry, plus 100% resources from selected structures. Industry, that's four points to unlock, but in order to unlock this with the four points, we first have to unlock War Chant. It's almost definite that we'll unlock War Chant. We can always explore the map with units, but War Chant is more important for our fighting forces. So unlock that and then unlock industry. These are not producing structures, right? These are not resource producing structures. Uh, click on industry. See, it's red, okay? But if we were to just move it over into the range of these furnaces, you know how far it will extend to, and then suddenly it works. So we know that we can just have this radius like this, you know, cover about this, and the two of these furnaces would have the effect. So let's look at over here, okay? There's more resource production structures. And now let's cast the industry thingy on all of these. And we should be able to get all six of them running, okay? I mean like five, because this is not. But anyway, if this was, then it would have the effect because uh, the circle says so. But how long does the doubling apply or remain? Well, that is two minutes, which is a lot of resources. We have got Eye of Sauron. Requires either War Chant or the Vision of Palantia to unlock. It reveals stealth enemies and orcs gain a plus 150% damage, plus 200% experience, and plus 50% armor. So I think I might have been wrong in using the Eye of Sauron sometimes for combat. Because remember, I preferred more of the Isengard army than the Mordor, and I use Isengard army more often. So, if I had used it for combat, it wouldn't have helped. It only applies to orcs, and didn't apply to orcs, I think. Anyway, revealing stealth enemies. So, elves that hide in trees, or rangers that hide in trees, and in fact, Frodo using the ring, or 
the hobbits using the cloaks. And then we can click on the hero emblem here to move the Eye of Sauron around. Okay, it will reveal the map for us, or we can click it on the mini map too, but we cannot shift Q on the mini map. We can shift Q on the map itself. Like if I were to click on mini map, it doesn't, it disappears, okay? But on the map itself, we can shift Q. And because I clicked on the mini map already, it went there first and then over to here. Now for the Eye of Sauron, it is already rank 10 and it doesn't combat, so no experience gained. But the duration of the Eye of Sauron is one minute. So it's pretty good, especially for orcs. And then after timers up, the Eye of Sauron will just disappear. Next, Devastation. Like I said, the power tree is more focused on damage and devastation. So we have devastation. Trees are turned into resources after spending one point on the Palantir one and then another three points on unlocking devastation, we have devastation. For devastation, the cooldown time is four minutes, but we get instant resources. Click on the power and then right click. Ta-da! If you pause the video, you would see that we get about 1,500 resources. That is what it is, even for larger number of trees. It's like, I tested it with three trees and it is 1,500. I tested it with seven trees and it is still 1,500. Okay, sorry for the cut there, so I checked indeed 1,005, I reloaded a few times and took out different numbers of trees and it's always 1,500, yeah. Fuel the fires, which is a plus 100% resources from harvesting trees. Firstly, it requires either industry or Eye of Sauron to be unlocked and then spend another 8 power points to unlock this one. Doubles the output rate from Lumber Mill. That simple. It's a passive power. However, resource from harvesting trees. Does this affect the amount that we get from devastation? From what I know, no. <laughs> from what I know, no. But yeah, from what I know, no, it doesn't. Anyway, passive power. Pretty straightforward, double the resources from lumber mills until all the trees have been cut down, then this is pretty much useless. What is even more useful than fuel the fires is this one, scavenger. All kills earn extra resources and you keep having income as long as your soldiers are fighting or rather as long as your orcs or orcais are in combat. You know, you get resources. So with this, it's like very synonymous with the evil faction, encouraging combat and encouraging fighting so that the evil factions get these resources. And this is a passive power. Uh, have I mentioned it? It requires um, the Eye of Sauron to be unlocked and then eight points for unlocking scavenger. But anyway, passive power, so no cooldown. Pretty straightforward. So we move on to the next power. And that would be Tainted Land. Tainted Land requires either Eye of Sauron or Devastation to be unlocked and then six more points to unlock Tainted Land. It taints an area of terrain. So this is the counterpart to the good faction's Elven Wood. The Elven Wood creates a lush wood or forested area while this one taints the area. So the, the two of them just override each other. All allied units standing on this tainted land get plus 50% armor. So you have seen how the units standing on the tainted land just now did gain extra bonuses. That's why they were glowing because they were under the effect of the plus 50% armor. While all enemy units standing on that patch of land will lose all leadership bonuses. Does not affect heroes. It doesn't affect heroes themselves, but the leadership bonuses afforded by the heroes to the combatants around them, that is lost. Because for the good side, the bonuses come from the heroes, right? Like, the combatants themselves don't really have any bonuses, the 
powers of the good factions don't really afford any bonuses. Those bonuses come from the heroes as well as the statue, the banner for Rohan, etc. This also means that heroes granting other heroes leadership powers would likely be unaffected as well. Anyway, this is a click and then right click on target to cast. So let's take a look at what it really does. This one, Tainted Land, all right? Cast it here. Ta-da! Ah, look at this animation. And then on the mini-map, you see the difference as well. You can see this uh, dark patch of land on the mini-map. Uh, let's move away. There we go. Okay. So it's like these, and you can see it on mini-map. Tainted Land's cooldown time is 4 minutes. And it takes effect immediately, no need for duration. Now what if we don't have combatants and we want to get more quickly? Well, we have got the Call the Horde power. Increased orc production speed, but requires Fuel the Fires to be unlocked and then spending 10 points to unlock Call the Horde. It has got a cooldown time of 5 minutes because it is quite fast. Having a sizable cooldown is necessary. Duration of the effect is 35 seconds, so it's pretty long. Uh, let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so um, let's see how fast. This is a rank 1 orc pit, and um, I have the duration of the Mortal Orc Warrior's production time. 30 seconds, so we know it is 30 seconds, okay? So now let's uh, cast Call the Horde and we'll see how fast it is. Ta -da! See that? That's how fast it is. Like one second? Yeah, one second. Imagine having six of these producing at the same time. That's a lot. Yeah, that's how fast it is. So maybe I'll need to reload the game again to show the mortal orc arches. Okay, uh, we now have enough command points. Let's try for the orc arches. Uh, hold the horde again. See, it's this fast. Oh my gosh. It's really, really fast. That's why it has got a five minutes cooldown time because this, this is significant, okay? Uh, how about we change the weather, you know, like, do anything except summon allies. <laughs> well, I mean, Sauron's armies don't like the daylight, so they prefer to travel in the dark, and we want dark skies. But these dark skies here do more than just dark skies. Firstly, at least unlocking either Fuel the Fires, Scavenger here, or Tainted Land, and then Unlocking darkness with 10 power points. It shrouds the entire map in darkness, okay, but all ally infantry hordes get plus 50% damage plus 50% armor. That is quite a lot, you know? Like, I mean, you have this one for your entire army, you have got them getting more resources, and then you have got war chant giving even more damage and more armor. And imagine with all these, and they're standing on tainted land. That is a lot of armor. 50 and uh, 50, there's 100, and then this is another 50. 150 plus 150% armor, okay? And then damage is plus 200% damage, all right? And they're getting extra resources. What more is that if they are mortal orcs, then this would apply to them as well. So it's even more. Uh, and I think they're stackable because they're not the same type of bonus. They're not like leadership bonuses and whatsoever. They have their own class of bonuses, so they stack. Otherwise, there's no point in allowing us to unlock these powers because one would override the other. So what's the point, right? It doesn't give the horde any advantage. So obviously, it has to be stackable for these powers to even be significant or be useful. The darkness power, once applied, lasts throughout the mission unless the good faction casts Cloudbreak. If not, it lasts forever, like throughout the mission. So the cooldown time is 10 minutes. 
It's a lot. It's the longest cooldown time of all. Longest? What about Balrog? We'll get to that. More weather though. Dark skies? Not enough. How about make it rain? It's not that good though. Sadly, it's not that good. Uh, freezing rain. Requires tainted land to be unlocked and then 8 points to unlock freezing rain. All enemy units lose all leadership bonuses. It's just like tainted land, just that they don't have to stand on that piece of land. They all lose their leadership bonuses. And that seems to apply to heroes as well. So if they had heroes, it applies to them. So that's something, isn't it? It's different from tainted land. It's only if they have leadership bonuses. If they don't have leadership bonuses, then this power is pretty much useless. So, freezing rain cooldown time is 3 minutes, because notably it's not as useful as darkness. So now let's showcase both. Haha, <laughs> see that? See that? <laughs> it toggled. So these are the ones that get the bonuses and these are the ones that don't get the bonuses now. Even though we cast the darkness and they should all get the bonus. So I think it's a bug. Okay, it's just a bug. Let's uh, look at this. Do they have bonuses? Yeah, some of them do. Look at here. See? Some of them do or well, some of them don't. So cast Freezing Rain. Which will make them lose all their bonuses, don't they? Aha! There. It's gone. Yeah. Takes a bit of time. But it's gone. No more glow. Okay? Okay, good. Now, dark skies. Aha, you can see the darkness, okay? And then these all get the glow from the bonus. And then they should glow brighter if I move them onto the tainted land. Yeah, see? They glow brighter. Okay, so the brightness of the glow depends on how much bonus or how much buffs they have and if I were to give them more chance that's even more buffs and do you have oh okay no you can you fly over here for even more buffs which king yeah see from the mini map it's flying over it's not that far leadership yeah plus 200 percent so this is a sizable fighting force with all these bonuses just look at this, this is so glaring now, oh my gosh. Just look at this, it's so glaring already. Oh wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow, okay. That's, uh, that's it, okay. <laughs> Finally though, we have got Summon Balrog. Requires darkness to be unlocked and then 20 points to unlock this, Summon Balrog. It summons the Balrog. The cooldown time for this is 6 minutes, and the duration of the Balrog is 1 minute and 15 seconds. Now, we have to be really careful with where we summon the Balrog, because it does friendly fire as well, okay? So do not summon the Balrog near to our own units. We can't summon inside of Minas Tirith, but we can summon it outside of Minas Tirith. So let's summon it here. It does friendly fire. It basically does damage around an area that it is summoned. Click and then right click. There. See that? A lot of things got damaged. Okay. Firstly, we want it to fly using the wings thingy. Click and then right click on the target area for it to fly. The cooldown time for the wings is only 5 seconds. So it's really fast. Alright, next we want to use Breathe Fire because this is the longest cooldown time, which has got 40 seconds. So, the duration of Balrog allows us to use it twice, alright? Ignite 50% armor and 200% damage for the Balrog. And this cooldown is uh, 10 seconds, so it doesn't matter if it uh, disappears, just use it again. So when you see it disappear, just use it again. Uh, we have got Scream. See? 
they cower, they kind of uh, like get frightened and uh, run away. So we have the breathe fire again. We can cast the breathe fire again. Of the one minute and fifteen seconds, you can use it twice unless it gets stuck and just doesn't move. Okay, this time round, let's summon it here. Uh, did I mention it's got 4,000 HP and 2,000 melee damage? So it's really powerful. Right, wing, fly in here. Breathe fire. Don't get stuck, please. Yeah, it does a lot of damage. Now, let's do the Fire Whip first. Attacks with Flaming Whip, so uh, the cooldown time for the Fire Whip, I think it's about 10 seconds as well. Yeah, it's about 10 seconds. So we can attack while waiting for the Breathe Fire. Oh yeah, stomping across the enemies will also take them out and you can see that we get resources from scavenge. Alright, breathe fire please, breathe fire please. Oh come on, do not get stuck. Yeah, there we go. There's a lot of damage in a large area so it takes out that one too. And then 1 minute 15 seconds later, it disappears. Okay, here's an add-on. I've been notified by one of my viewers that the Balrog has another unique occurrence to it. That is, if it has got Ignite and we use the Wings function to fly across the sky and during that process if we encounter any air enemy units, then those enemy units can get damaged by the Ignite. Enemy units have to be in the air, they have to be at a certain height, the flying height of the Balrog, whenever the Balrog encounters the Eagles. That is something that's very difficult to replicate. Unfortunately, this also means that using this approach to damage enemy air units is highly unreliable. Because, you know, like, they have to be at the same height, and we have to remember to use Ignite on the Balrog, and yeah, they have to be summoned at the same time too. Furthermore, they have to cross paths. So yeah, good to know, but don't rely on this method. Just use fire arrows. <laughs> that's the best option anyway. So I think that's about it for the campaign powers here for Evil Faction. Now this time round for Minas Tirith or other missions, the cooldown time is the same for all the powers. So we don't really have to worry too much about that. But in the skirmish mode though, the power layout is very different, the power tree is very different. Okay, I've loaded Isengard, and this is the Isengard's power tree. Uh, the requirements are different, and the skill points required are also different, the layout also different, but cooldown time, same. We don't really have to worry about that. Uh, let me show you the Palantia though, because like here it's not shown. Click on it and then right click. Ta da! Vision of Palantia didn't require any prerequisites then, so whatever. 2.5 minutes cooldown time. Uh, this vision, this revealed vision, lasts for 2 minutes. So it's kind of nice. 2.5 minutes later, we can reveal this area again. Yeah, pretty straightforward skill. But, I mean, power. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, that's the layout for the Isengard faction. So for Isengard, we have got the war chant because, you know, like, um, I think that is the war chant when they first attacked Helm's Deep, if I'm not mistaken. Tainted Lands? Yeah, I don't think it is specific to Saruman, although industry would be. Yeah, and, uh, devastation would be. And of course, Fuel of the Fires would be too. Palantir would be as well. But this, no, rain? Not exactly. Of course, not Balrog, although um, Moria was where Balrog was. Anyway, let's take a look at Mordor. And for Mordor, we have got the Tainted Land right at the beginning. 
And then we've got Eye of Sauron. So Palantir for the Isengard to reveal the map and then Sauron for Mordor to reveal the map. We still have got industry and devastation though. Uh, let me unlock this. And we can see that there is some problems. Uh, look at that. The same problem we encountered in the good faction powers featurette, okay? Like when you load the skirmish mode, sometimes the powers just don't load up here. So gotta leave the mission and then reload it again to show how it looks like, which I will have to do because I want to show the layout of the skills here, like how it looks like over here. So give me a moment. That's the layout. So, um, yeah, scavenger. Yeah, I guess so. Why not? I mean, Mordor, scavenger, how does it really relate? Not exactly, but okay. Darkness would make sense, obviously, because that's Sauron, you know, and Sauron I. Obviously, and then call the horde only useful for Mordor anyway, so should be here and Balrog, yeah. So I think that's about it. Wow, look at this army here. <laughs> oh, but we're not concerned about that. We're concerned about the powers. Yeah. Again, this is the full tree, the full power tree. Okay. So let me know if I've made any mistakes or if I've uh, missed out anything in the comments below. I hope you found this episode useful and helpful and informational. I think that's it for all the featured videos for this series. What's left to do would be to play the skirmish mode. Out of the four factions, I have to feature one faction. I'll share about the reason behind choosing that faction in the episode itself. But for this episode, it ends here. Thank you very, very much for watching. And I hope to see you next episode. That's all I have for now. Have a nice day.